Icebergs. You love them, I love them, everybody loves them. Well, except for a few people in the North Atlantic Ocean during 1912, but for the most part, you know, most people enjoy these things. We've got to preserve them, we've got to look after them, and most importantly, we have to explore them. And my favourite thing to do recently is watch things of where people have combined icebergs with YouTube videos. What do you get with that combination? Well, well, you get a bunch of videos where I can procrastinate for two hours watching somebody speak about some subject which really doesn't interact with my life in any possible positive way, but you know, it's a good way to procrastinate, and uh, that's exactly why you're here today. So as you've probably worked out, I'm not a geologist who's going to explain to you the life cycle of an iceberg and how they are rapidly declining because of climate change ravaging this planet. Instead, I'm going to be a internet um, expert, I guess, because I'm going to be explaining to you internet icebergs. The internet iceberg is often used to illustrate how web spaces are structured. This includes the surface web, the smaller visible part of the iceberg easily navigatable through standard search engines like Google, and the deep web, the largest part of the iceberg, including unindexed or encrypted pages. Now personally, I'm somebody that has recently found a fascination, fascination, or I can't speak English, a fascination in watching iceberg videos. I really just don't know why, I, I just find a lot of interest in them, and I was sat down the other day, uh, meant to be doing work, but I decided to watch a video about an iceberg breakdown of some topic which really doesn't impact my life in any way, but it was enjoyable. And I sat there and I thought to myself, hold on a second, I could make videos like this, but based on the videos that I currently make, i.e. making icebergs on people on the internet and people that we speak about here. Why? Well, because I'm an internet bully. And I was sat there thinking, well, who do I cover? Shane Dawson, Anision, Nikocado, Avocado, the ideas and possibilities are limitless. But then I had a thought, eh, hey, what about that weight loss YouTuber where everybody complains that I don't actually cover the drama surrounding them and only cover the weight loss story? And yes, you probably guessed it. Obviously, I'm speaking about Amberlyn Reed. Amberlynn is a weight loss YouTuber that I've covered multiple times on this channel, but mainly only focused around the whole diet aspect of the drama sphere that she's kind of involved in. I like to call this the Amberlynn-verse. This is a place where so many things seem to happen to the point of where I genuinely can't keep up with it. So I think the best way to do this is to break down an iceberg which goes through every single scenario that Amberlynn has been involved in. And I actually did a little Google search and I did find an extreme extremely detailed iceberg to do with Amberlynn's life cycle on the internet. Looking at this right now, there is a lot of things on here which I've never seen before, a lot of things on here which could be considered incredibly offensive and some things which may not even be true, so I do just want to put a little, uh, a little warning here saying that I did not make this iceberg, I did find it on the godforsaken place which is Reddit, so please do not get mad if there are some things on here which aren't fake. Basically, what I'm going to do is go through this entire thing and give little explanations of what was going on at that period of time and how it impacted Amberlynn in some form of way and how it impacted the internet. So yes, uh, this is the deep dive in to the Amberlynn Reed iceberg. But before we do that, I do just have to be incredibly annoying for a second and say, hey, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I, I know, I know, I know you're getting annoyed at me asking for subs and you're going to say you don't need to do it. You know, guys, I need to do it because it does actually work. And you know, it, it's my job. It is my job. Please don't get mad at me for interrupting an hour long video for 30 seconds. I'm just asking you to subscribe. Please, I'm on my knees. I'm trying to hit a million subs. If you could do so, that'd be amazing. Please turn on notifications. And also, please comment down below who you would want me to cover in another iceberg video. I would be fascinated to know. Just comment anything or anyone you want down below. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now this area isn't even considered the top of the iceberg, this is just regular things such as knowing, hey, this is Amberlynn Reed, she's an obese mukbang YouTuber who makes vlogs and speaks about her life on the internet. Uh, great. I don't necessarily think that we need to go through this, this is pretty uh, self-explanatory to what this actually is, and as I said, it's not even the tip of the iceberg, there isn't anything here that nobody knows, and I think this is designed to be, well, everybody kind of knows who Amberlynn is, but you may not know absolutely everything about her.
So now we're past that, we are going to move into the tip of the iceberg. And the first part is, Amberlyn Reed loves the Cheesecake Factory. And no, I will not be making any jokes about this statement, but yes, Amble and Reed supposedly loving the Cheesecake Factory, which seems to be some form of fast food or restaurant in America, maybe even Britain, I'm not exactly too sure, I've never been there myself, but I'm a big connoisseur of cheesecake, in fact, I had a little weight issue one time, and it may come down to the fact that I, I really like cheesecake, cheesecake is so good, uh, please just keep it away from me, because I also don't want to go on an arc of starting and restarting a diet 6,000 times. We are going to the Cheesecake Factory, um, I have not been there in forever. So I ordered the Cheesecake Factory, which I haven't done in a while. I love the Cheesecake Factory. Now to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure why this is in the tip of the iceberg section of the Amberlin verse. My only guess can be is that when I went to a few of the comment sections, a lot of people were basically complaining or just stating the fact that apparently in a lot of these videos of where Amberlin goes to the Cheesecake Factory or any restaurant, Amberlin seemingly orders her food whilst vlogging, but then mysteriously throughout the video, random pieces of food turn up which wasn't ordered throughout the vlog, and people are basically saying this is why Amblin puts on weight because she secretly snacks without even mentioning it throughout her videos. But to be honest with you, I, I, I don't necessarily care about this point. I think I'm more just upset about the fact that in 2022, Amblin seems to have lost her love for the Cheesecake Factory and um, yeah, I'm sorry for breaking that devastating news to you all. But moving on to the Becky era. I, I don't know why I was so loud with that, but yeah. The Becky era. This references to Anne Boleyn's girlfriend between 2017 and 2021, and as you can now imagine, they have sadly uh, broken up. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just say it. Um, we have broke up. <laughs> the fact that you guys have made me watch this relive, relive some of my favorite influencers breaking up. I can't believe I, I, I managed to put this out of my mind, but now all, all the memory I just I just miss Becky and Amberlyn. Sorry. Um. Yeah. They they broke up. In this video, they basically say that this was a mutual breakup with no issues. Seemingly, everything was fine, but then eventually, a lot of texts were leaked, suggesting, well, not exactly the worst things in the world, but things such as Amberlynn allegedly not showering for three months. Now, to be honest with you, a lot of you may see this as a big deal, you know, not showering for three months is a little bit stinky, you know, but personally for me, I've not showered for six months, so, you know, maybe me and Amberlynn are stinky brothers and sisters, who knows, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not really the end of the world, and that's probably why this is at the tip of the iceberg. Torrid hauls. Now this is just a reference to the amount of clothing hauls that Amberlynn does from a retail store called Torrid which sells plus size clothing. Now again this is nothing major, this is nothing massive, this is well it, it, it is plus size clothing. It's nothing like significant but uh, I did find a little funny clip after browsing some comments of where Amberlynn is seemingly wearing a dress backwards and she doesn't really notice this. So here is the dress that I had on. Again, size six. Hello. Now, um, I'm not, I'm not a fashion expert, but, uh, the dress does look <laughs> back to front, uh, and it's, it's not like the most dramatic thing in the world, but, um, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's funny. Right? It's funny. God, stop stop getting critical of me. I, I just found it a little bit funny. And moving on to Twinkie, Rarity, and Wasabi. These are Amberlynn's three pets, her dog, and two cats, all of which she's been accused of abusing. It's getting a bit dark now, I know. Um, He doesn't have arthritis, which beagles get really easily. No Crohn's disease. He's completely normal, just obese. And that is mainly from him getting fixed because that happens to a lot of beagles and um for you guys all just to know monkey is only 11 pounds overweight so it's not like he is 30 pounds overweight he is not abused in any way and i'm going to be putting this video up not part of my vlog because now i'm rambling um i just my animals are my pride and joy and i love them with like, they're my children. I love them more than anything besides Crystal, of course. And, um, I, I can't imagine someone ever commenting on someone's video saying, 
you abuse your children because they're 10 pounds overweight. I don't know if these allegations are exactly true. There's a lot of compilation videos going around on the internet and some of them do seem a little bit suspicious, but I am gonna remain and say that these are indeed allegations. Like most of the things in this video, I will say are allegations, but you know, there's a, it's a bit peculiar that there are actual compilations alleging that she abuses her animals. I mean, there's certainly not that with me and there is hopefully not that with any of you guys watching this right now. Then we move on to the Destiny era and Destiny is another ex-girlfriend of Amberlynn and I am starting to notice a reoccurring trend throughout this of where Amberlynn has had a lot of uh, relationships. And so now I'm not being critical, you do you, but one thing I am being critical of is everybody watching this video right now because Amberlynn Reed has had more relationships than all of us. Uh, and that's, again, not me criticizing Amberlynn, that's more me showing how lonely you are and how lonely I am. Wait, no, actually, I've got a girlfriend. Uh, you guys are the lonely sacks of shits watching this, actually. I'm perfectly fine. We're going to go out to eat. We've never been to this restaurant before. She's been begging to go to it for a little while now. Now, it has been speculated over the fact that Destiny possibly cheated on Amberlynn. I, again, don't really know how deep that goes. I'm sure it goes very, very deep. It's a thing with Amberlynn Reed of where there could be the most minute form of thing, and then it will uh, gradually expand into some form of massive thing. And again, as I said earlier, I'm only going to briefly go through every single bit on here because there is indeed a lot of things to go through. But yeah, she was accused of cheating, and Destiny does uh, repetitively turn up in this iceberg, which I will continue to go through when we actually get to that point. But then we move on to the topic of weight loss. Amberlynn's highest weight, 572 pounds. I just wanna remind people, cause I do have a lot of new subscribers. Um, a couple years ago, I actually reached my highest weight at 572.4. So I was like very close to the 600s, which is like, so crazy to wrap my head around, it's very scary. Now I imagine the reason for this being on here is because naturally the biggest topic of discussion surrounding Amblin Reed during her time on the internet is obviously her experiences with diets, thousands and thousands and thousands of diets, and also her, I guess, uh, unique ability to lose 100 pounds and then gain 100 pounds and then lose 100 pounds. It's genuinely quite a fascinating thing and also a rather tragic and sad thing to witness. So Amblin's stating that her highest weight of 572 pounds is obviously going to be on here, but also there are some other things to do with highest record weights, which we will get into. As you can see, they are also on the deeper parts of this iceberg, which I will eventually explain. But yeah, the next part of this iceberg is more surface level information, finishing it off with things like Amblin having a binge eating disorder, and how she went through a period of live streaming on her channel, which she admitted damaged her channel. I, again, you may think, why is this on here? It doesn't really seem that significant. And I agree with you. It's it, it's not exactly the most dramatic thing. You know, she live streamed for a while, but I guess it was a chapter in her channel, which some of the people in the Amberlynn verse seem to remember. Do you think the live streams hurt your channel because you're getting a lot less views? Someone replied and said, I think it boils down to her being boring on her own. She doesn't have the creativity or personality to carry videos on her own. Yes, live streams completely hurt my channel. Amberlynn, to be honest with you, I feel like what actually affects your channel is being involved in a controversy every single day. It seems at this point, I could go onto YouTube and search your name and there will be another video made about how you've lied, gassed, little manipulated somebody in some form of scenario. This is the thing which is a, a, a rather reoccurring pattern. You lie, you get exposed, you gaslight, you girl boss, and you manipulate. Uh, that's probably why your channel's in a bad state. Not necessarily because of live streams, probably because you come off of uh, a somewhat of a, a bad person. But everybody, we've made it. We've got past the tip of the iceberg, so I want everybody to go to the comment section and clap, clap, clap. Comment a clap emoji down below, because you should be proud of yourselves. We've done it, we've got through the first segment, and I feel like we did it pretty quickly, and I am very impressed with all of us for sitting back and enjoying. Now, I do just want to say, it's a hydration check. Please make sure to pick up a liquid that you are consuming right now, preferably not a Pepsi Max, because I don't think this is the most healthy, healthy thing to be drinking right now. Instead, you <laughs> should be drinking water, green tea, coffee, whatever you want to do. Just have a drink, hydrate, and... <sighs> Let's get into it, because we have a lot to get through, ladies and gentlemen, and MDs. 
Now this part of the iceberg is where things start to get a little bit weirder, a little bit darker, and a little bit worse in general. And the starting point of this bit of the iceberg is quite sad. Well, it's very sad. This was a very big part of Amberlin's channel, Amberlin's life in general. And I, 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 I'm not really too comfortable of showing it, but it is a part of the iceberg. It is a massive part of Amberlin's life. And this is Amberlin being diagnosed with uterine cancer. Um, I've been having... Panic attacks. Oh god. So I got my result of my results back and I do have cancer. Fuck. I have womb cancer. And so it's uterine cancer. Now naturally this is something to obviously not be joked about. I am somebody that has lost a lot of family members to cancer and I think all of you guys have probably dealt with some form of uh, I guess relation to cancer in your lifetimes. It's a horrible thing and whilst you know I, I, I've made jokes about you know illness and stuff like that before never at the expense of somebody who truly is going through it or dealing with cancer or any form of relation to it. I'm not going to make a joke about it and I think if you go to the comment section to make a joke about it please just don't. I, it's just not a thing that I'm comfortable with and I just feel like it morally it's just a messed up thing to do. Now funnily enough because I've guessed of Amberlin's history on the internet there was a lot of speculation over whether Amberlin actually lied about this cancer diagnosis but Amberlin actually made a video where she came out and showed evidence showing and proving that she indeed has a cancer diagnosis. This is like so personal and private. If you want your proof here's your proof. Here's an actual medical record. And you know, obviously, I, I, I'm very glad that Amberlynn didn't lie about having cancer. Lying about a diagnosis like that is genuinely one of the most disgusting things that any human being could do. Personally, I don't know anyone that's lied about having cancer, but if you did do it, you're probably a, a shitty person, a terrible person in fact, because cancer is a terrible thing which ruins the lives of a lot of people around the globe. But yeah, I, I would like to happily say there is a positive end to this part of the iceberg of Amberlynn actually did upload a video stating that she has indeed beaten cancer but as of right now i am cancer free i started actually bawling my eyes out and i was like thanking her and i could tell she probably gets that kind of praise every single day i was literally bawling i was just like oh my god oh my god so thank you so much so yeah um i'm i guess i could just end this part of the iceberg here by saying great i, I don't really know what to say here <laughs> without sounding like a dick like yeah, this is fantastic news. Um, can we move on now? Because I'm kind of uncomfortable. Uh, moving on. Octavia? Octavia? The Octavia diet, I think? Well, this is where things start to get interesting. This is where I first started to look into the case files of Amberlynn Reed because this is where I started to get interested because I've always had a lot of interest in diet culture. And this is where Amberlynn started a diet back in February of 2019. Hey guys, so we have a very large unboxing. Today is my first day on Optavia and I am super excited and I wanted to unbox it's a lot. I wanted to unbox all this with you guys, so... But strangely enough, uh, nine days later, Amelin quit. Also, a lot of people are probably going to be like, hey, hey, I told you so. But a few days ago, I have officially decided not to do Optavia. I have decided this through talking with my health coach, with my girlfriend, with tons of people who are close to me. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. Back in 2019, this was seen as a very controversial thing, a very bad thing. You quit a diet after nine days. But it's been three years now, and it's 2022. And if Amberlynn started a diet now and went for nine days straight, I would actually applaud her because that would be like a record time for her. So... I don't know if I could even be mad at her. Nine days is a long time for Amblin and Reed. She has now, I think, broken a, a, a diet within a day or even two days. Something like that. Definitely shorter than nine days. So, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly that mad at that because of how crazy her diet schedule has actually gotten in more recent times. Amblin quitting diets is a very big trend on the internet. It's something which she is basically known for more than anything else. And hence, this is quite high up on the iceberg. But then we move on to something which I guess I can understand and being this low on the iceberg or not too high on the iceberg, it's Amberlynn's love for Lego. This is something that I didn't realize was a thing, but apparently, well, it's a thing. I've been putting together expert Legos. Okay, we need to stop this and uh, we just need to 
pause and say, guys, can we uh, stop? Can we just stop doing this, Americans? Can we stop calling it Legos? It, it, it's Lego. It's Lego. All right. It, 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 it's, it's Lego, not Legos. It is Lego. I don't care what anybody says. I'm just frustrated at even hearing it. So please, can everybody go to the comment section and comment Lego? Thank you very much. But um, yeah, that's 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 basically it. She likes Lego. Uh, the Christie era. This is another girlfriend of Amberlynn who featured on the Amberlynn Reed channel between the years of 2013 and 2015. The year I started university and the year I lost my mental health. Oh God, that God, that got a bit dark. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people guessed what I was going through. I'm not sure how lucky guessed about. A month ago, I was having some troubles in my relationship. I keep about 99% of my life private and the other 1% I do like end up telling you. Crystal and I were having like a little issue. We were trying to work it out for about two weeks. We didn't tell anybody. We just kept everything private completely. And on April 1st, things kind of just, everything kind of blew up into smoke we decided to break up. Oh, sorry, I was just writing down some notes about how Amelyn Reed has got a better romantic history than you or me or anybody else watching this video right now. Um, oh God. Again, I'm not shaming. I'm not shaming. In fact, I'm, I'm applauding. In fact, I'm saying, I'm, I'm shaming the people watching this video. You're incredibly lonely. Like you're watching an iceberg video about Amberlynn Reed. Weight Watchers, a diet that a lot of people like to do. A diet that Amberlynn clearly likes to do. So today is day one, I'm back on Weight Watchers. I'm gonna give it a go. Well, uh, two days later. My way in for you guys. So I am gaining weight, even though I started Weight Watchers. Now naturally, a lot of people were quick to point out the fact that Amberlynn you can't lose weight in two, well, you may be able to lose a pound or two in two days, but most of that will be water weight. It's it's virtually impossible to start a diet and lose any big forms of progress in two days. Like, I, I'm sorry, but that just isn't the case. And this is where a lot of people started accusing Amberlynn of attention seeking, of using diet culture as a way to profit on her channel, because naturally by doing a lot of diet videos, people will have their interest because they are personally interested in that diet as well. And it will bring in viewers to Amberlynn's channel. And this is why a lot of these diets appear on this iceberg, because Amberlynn has regularly been accused of faking these videos, of faking these diets in general, just in the pursuit of monetary gain. And to be honest with you, I do completely agree with that. Whilst I do think that Amberlynn's weight loss journey did start off with a, a, a very genuine intent at the beginning. I do believe that she truly did want to lose weight and probably still does, but now she knows that doing diet videos is obviously going to make her a lot of money. And if she lost all the weight and didn't have that big weight loss journey in the future, she would not have, I, I, I guess, the views that she thinks that she is getting now in the future, which I actually don't agree with. I think if Amberlynn just did healthy lifestyle videos, it would probably do very well. There's actual compilation videos on the internet between 2014 and 2020 of Amberlynn starting and restarting Weight Watchers diets, hence it's on the iceberg. It's a, a very popular thing, which Amberlynn has actually spoken about herself, about how she know she keeps failing this diet and at this point it's becoming a little bit of a meme a little bit of a joke hence again it's on the iceberg but now moving on to something a bit more obscure which is journaling hello you guys beautiful lovely people okay so i used to do a lot of journaling back in the day i'm talking like obsessed. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I actually really relate to this one. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not actually making any jokes here. Journals is some, are something that I really like to collect, and I genuinely don't know why. I will, like, see a nice-looking journal, and I'll buy it, and I'll never use it. Maybe I'll write one page, but I will never, never use it. I've got journals lying around from three years ago just because I thought it looked nice, and I thought I'd buy it, and I, I feel like this is something a lot of people actually have, and I'm kind of glad, even though it was a bit obscure, I'm glad it's on this list because it's made me feel a little less insane. Now the next part of this iceberg I'm not really going to go into specifics about because one it would make me a little bit uncomfortable to speak about it because it is extremely personal and I also think it's extremely obvious it is Amberlynn's parents were drug abusers that's not my place to speak and as I said there are going to be fairly deep topics on here and I just want to avoid that one. But the next part of this I am more than happy to speak about because I've spoken about it quite a few times and that is Amberlynn's 
gaslighting. The first and foremost thing that I want to say is being in denial and lying are two completely different things. Now, if there's a big criticism to have of Anne Boleyn Reed, other than all the horrendous things that she's allegedly done, it's the gaslighting, it's the lying, they're very simple things, but the very common recurring patterns throughout our whole history of YouTube. Now, in that video, as you saw, Anne Boleyn was caught lying and seemingly tried to convince her audience that she actually wasn't lying. No, 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 no. She wasn't lying, she was, um in denial. So she decided to convince her audience of that, which to me personally, knowing somebody's mani manipulative as Anne Boleyn Reed, I feel like that is a little bit of gaslighting. And as I said, it's a very recurring theme for our Anne Boleyn's channel. If you search Anne Boleyn Reed, lying, exposed, or gaslighting, I guarantee you it's gonna come up with quite a few results. It's a massive critique of her, and she is obviously just in general, quite a big gaslighter. But now we move straight back into the conversation of diet topics, because we have Jenny Craig, which is apparently a type of diet, I guess, that Anne Boleyn uh, seemed to want to actually do. Hey guys, so welcome to day one of me being on Jenny Craig. I'm really excited. Now you've probably guessed it, this is another failed diet for Amberlynn Reed, and it seems like there's a bit of a repetitive cycle which we're going to actually get into later in this video because a cycle is actually a part of this iceberg lower down, but yes, this is a cycle. Amberlynn did a few videos about the Jenny Craig diet and then she seemingly stopped, but then weirdly enough, around a month later, started the diet again? I know you guys are probably rolling your eyes at the title, which I understand. Like, you guys see me as this very indecisive person, and I am an indecisive person. I live with myself 24-7. Um, just imagine how Becky feels. So yes, I will be doing Jenny Craig again. So she started the diet, then she stopped the diet, and then she started the diet, and then, only a few months later, she stopped the diet and started doing another one. Hey guys, so welcome to day zero of a new series, and I am so excited. And there are two things we can either take from this. We can either take from the fact that Amberlynn Reed is a victim of diet culture. She has seen the amount of diets in the world, and she is so desperate to lose weight that she is honestly just trying to do every single one. She just wants to lose weight, and she is willing to try absolutely everything. But because of this, because of so many people being successful in this diet, it's almost making her feel a little bit sad, and she's just giving up very easily. Or we can go with the other option, which is Amberlynn realizes that diet culture sells. She realizes that a lot of people out there have a lot of interest in diets and she realizes that if she puts her spin on that, she can make a lot of moolah, a lot of money. And to be honest with you, I think it's a bit of both, but mainly nowadays, I think it's to do with the monetary gain aspect of things. I think that Amberlynn fully knows how to lose weight. I think she fully understands that if she wants to, she could probably just quite easily lose weight by being in a calorific deficit. But yeah, I think Amberlynn completely exploits diet culture and, um... Yeah, moving on to the incorrect pronunciation of words. I understand that's a little bit ironic considering throughout this entire video, I've been fighting for my life. I choreographed chore and me and my dad were actually reminiscing uh, talent shows. I choreographed them. I used to be in dance groups. I would choreograph dances to do in talent shows. Choreograph. That is a channel called Dainty basically does a lot of compilations about Amberlynn and uh, I guess worst moments, her funniest moments, her cringiest moments. And in this one here, it's become a little bit of a meme and Amberlynn verse that Amberlynn mispronounces words and it even plays into the hater section that I mentioned earlier because Amberlynn seemingly mispronounces the word hater every time she says it. Right along with the trolls and the haters. 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 And to be honest with you, I relate to this. I can't speak the English language perfectly myself, and uh, I don't really see this to be a bad thing. It's more just a little meme in the Amberlynn verse, and that's absolutely fine. But uh, moving on to Drunklin, which I guess is just supposedly a nickname. Ni I, I just can't speak today. It's supposedly a nickname for Amberlynn when she's drunk. So yeah, this is Caribbean rum with coconut liquor. I don't know. I like it. So Drunklin might be a Lynn that's gonna show up 
here soon. Now, I'm not exactly sure uh, to why this is on the iceberg. It's not really anything mesmerizing or impressive, but you know, it's, it's, it's on there. It's a part of the Amber inverse lore, and uh, we're now gonna move on to 4XL clothing, which I think, again, we can just skip past because I think it's pretty self-explanatory of Amber and Reed wearing 4XL clothing. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't have any issues with that. Um, I sound like I'm actually trying to convince you guys that I have, that I don't have an issue with, I, I don't have an issue. 300 pounds at 11 years old. For some perspective here, a lot of you probably know that I've gone through a weight loss journey of losing over 100 pounds at my heaviest at age 24. So at six foot two, I was 315 pounds. So Amberlynn Reed being around, I think five foot three at 300 pounds at the age of 11, where she's probably gonna be like four foot, is absolutely insane, almost to a point of where I'm not sure if I actually believe that. I weighed 290 pounds when I was 10, 11 years old. Um, that is the lowest weight I remember ever being. And I was only just 10 and 11 years old. Now, if there's one thing to take from this clip is the fact that there was a sign of innocence at the beginning of this. An innocent wants to actually lose weight. It's very clear in my mind that Amberlynn is somebody that has struggled with weight throughout her entire life. And she has always wanted to lose weight. And I believe at the beginning of her YouTube journey, as I've said in this video, she had genuine intentions, which has now spurred into the intentions of gaining a lot of money. But ladies and gentlemen, can we just get another round of applause in the comment section because I'm getting a little bit tired. We're not even halfway through this video, I'm pretty sure, but we finally got through this part of the segment and now we are on to a, a deeper part of the iceberg, which involves things becoming a little bit more obscure. And it starts off by referencing Crystal, one of Amberlynn's exes, in Crystal's parents giving Amberlynn an allowance. Now, to be honest with you, me and my researchers couldn't actually find anything to, I guess, back this up about Amberlynn's ex-girlfriend's parents giving her an allowance or giving her pocket money, whatever you want to call it if you're an American or a British person or, or anybody throughout the world. An allowance means, I guess, pocket money. And apparently, Amblin was given pocket money from her ex-girlfriend's parents. I don't really think this is a deep thing, but a lot of people have said that, I guess, Amblin was mooching off Crystal, living at Crystal's parents' house, and was basically just not doing anything there. Again, I, I don't really think this is anything that deep, and I, I, I don't personally care. But, you know, it's a part of the Amberverse law. Expert Legos. Now, I... I, I I realize I've kind of messed up halfway through this. Now, whilst Amberlynn does have a little bit of a peculiar love for Lego, the reason it's actually in this iceberg isn't because of her fascination for the old bricky game. It's actually to do with the fact that, well, she mispronounces the word Legos. I've been putting together expert Legos, Legos, Legos. Look, I can't really mock this. Like, I, I, as much as you guys might find this funny, I can't speak the English language correctly, and it's my native language. So, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh at this one, but, uh, yeah, she says Legos. Moving on. Now, the next part of this is... <laughs> It's something a bit mean. It is, I can't lie to you all. It's a, it's a little bit mean, but at the same time, it is incredibly funny. So it's uh, O, B, C, D. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to play a little clip and uh, you're going to see it. Basically, Amberlynn gets a little comment during her live stream where she was speculating over the fact that she may possibly have OCD. Still not broke. Still going good. So yeah. You don't have OCD. You have O, B, C, D. Okay, thank you. I didn't know my psychiatrist was on here. Thank you. Emotional damage! You okay. <laughs> it's, I shouldn't laugh because it is really <laughs> mean, but... I'm not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh. The thing I've noticed about the whole Amble and Reed community is there is a lot of brutality in the humor. And as I have kind of explored the whole thing throughout my research of this iceberg, like, I'm not justifying a lot of it, but there are some really bad things that Amberlynn has done, some really fishy things, and I'm like, 
well, a, a little joke here and there. I, I don't think it's the worst thing. So um, I'm just going to move on to the next part, which is wifey. Now, wifey is one of the biggest parts of the Amberlynn story. If you know about Amberlynn Reed, you've probably heard of the person wifey. Uh, basically, this is a girlfriend or former girlfriend of Amberlynn Reed's, and uh, it's somebody that nobody has actually seen. It's a an, an unknown specimen, an unknown human being, which there isn't any photos of or videos as as far as I believe if I'm wrong please correct me down below but I have done research and I couldn't find any um, videos of this person but all I could really find is that wifey is a former girlfriend of Amberlynn's and uh, hey she's hot according to Amberlynn's ex. When is wifey going to come forward as a prime candidate in the Casey Anthony tribal trials? We know she's over 300 pounds. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> they only knew. Yeah, like she, she's she, so far from that. She's fire. Oh my God. I like, I constantly am like, why do you like me? I don't understand, but you're wrong. Love that for you. Yeah, she's hot. And I like her. She's cool. I don't know about you guys, but um, I do find it a little bit strange that uh, Amberlynn's ex-girlfriend Becky is sat next to her. Basically, like, I guess calling Amberlynn's new girlfriend or, I guess, uh, potential future at this point, girlfriend's hot? It, it, it's just a little bit of a weird scenario. I, am, am I weird for thinking that this is weird? But yes, at this point in this clip, uh, I don't believe Amberlynn is actually dating Wifey, but um, apparently uh, Wifey had actually bought plane tickets to go and visit Amberlynn, and that's when you know it's serious. I mean, anybody buying plane tickets to visit Amberlynn Reed probably should get checked up on, but uh, just take a look at this clip. How much weight do you have to lose to meet Wifey? Well, she already booked a flight. <laughs> so we have the exact... Um, day, so. Now after this, things start to get uh, a little bit more suspicious because despite trying to hide the identity of this person, um, Amberlynn gets a donation, a $2 donation, and it says, you've been killing it, babe, see you in September, and then Amberlynn then claims that this is wifey, and I, I've, I, it's not like I'm denying the existence of wifey, but I, I do find it a little bit strange that Amberlynn is very dead set on, I guess, having this private life of not revealing who Wifey is, but then she is very eager to reveal the fact that this was Wifey in her chat and is, is very eager to speak about them. So it's kind of like she wants a private life, but at the same time doesn't. And again, it, it's not the, the most deepest thing in the world, but uh, it, it is a little bit weird. You've been killing it, babe. See you in September. <laughs> <laughs> That's really her. What? Yeah. That's her, y'all. Okay? It is what it is. Now, a lot of people, as I said, in the Amberverse have debated the actual existence of Wifey. Personally, I like to think that she exists, but at the same time, after everything I've read in my research of this, I'm not exactly sure at this point. So many people have tried to work out who is Wifey and is she a troll? Is she taking advantage of Amberlynn and just using her for attention and using her for, I, I, I guess, views despite nobody actually knows who she is? And uh, despite all of the rumors, despite all of the speculation and research, Amberlynn actually uh, released a video where she now claims that this uh, side character in the Amberlynn Cinematic Universe no longer exists. Guys, we all know she won't talk about wifey. She's never going to address wifey unless she gets caught on camera by accident or something. Until then, it's just the cat changing the fire alarm battery and a friend driving her around. Okay, wifey no longer exists. Wifey is a thing in the past. We do still talk. I am dating someone. I remember I told you guys that I was talking to someone. Now we have officially started dating. I feel like this is kind of like when Kevin Feige went out to Edward Norton after he played the Hulk and said, you know what, Edward, you're not in this thing anymore. Uh, we've got Mark and uh, we don't need you. You no longer exist in this cinematic universe. We've got somebody else. Because yeah, um, she no longer exists. And uh, that's my brief explanation of wifey. She's this mysterious hot figure who um, I, I guess Anne Boleyn dated for a while. Who is wifey? Well, I guess we'll never know. Well, actually, no, uh, that's kind of not true because apparently Amberlynn is still dating wifey, according to a expose video, and I am a little bit confused because apparently 
Amberlynn Reed said she has a new girlfriend, and she said that Amberlynn's new girlfriend's favourite film is Willy Wonka. But also, Wifey's favourite film is also Willy Wonka. <laughs> I don't know how we've gotten onto Willy Wonka, but just take a look at this exposed video. So you know what I did? I went over there and I watched the 6,000 damn Snapchats and Amberlynn Redone slipped up and she posted this one right here. Boom. What is your girlfriend's favorite movie? And it says right there, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know the one that 1971 film with Gene Wilder? He got that big ass hat and he eats some chocolate or some nonsense over there? Yes, it's a little bit specific, that movie, right? And if you know right now, Amberlynn Reed says she got a new girlfriend. She gave the other wifey a boot and sent her back home, right? But nobody believing a damn word that Amberlynn Reed is saying. So you know what I did? I did a little bit damn detectiveness because I remember sitting through all them live streams, them hundreds of hours of live streams where she had Wifey on there. And I remember somebody asked her the question, what was Wifey's favorite movie, right? And Amberlynn Reed had no damn answer. So you know who answered this question. The one and only Wifey herself. She was on FaceTime or some nonsense and she answered this question in her own voice. So it's 100%, 0% proof that she said this herself. So let's just sit back and watch Amberlynn Reed expose that wifey lives with her once again because wifey told her her favorite movie right now. Here we go. Boom. What's her favorite movie? Hold on. Oh, I swear she's told me this. Favorite movie. Mm. Damn. Babe, come on. Oh, you scared me. Okay, wait, what is it? Wait, I forget. Give me a hint. Don't judge me for this. Willy Wonka in the top of the <gasps> Yes. Yes, Willy. Oh. Look, all I can really say here is, um, I don't know, maybe Amberlynn Reed is a big part of the Willy Wonka fan club. Or maybe she's just completely and utterly bullshitting about absolutely everything. Who knows at this point? Now, obviously, it's all a little bit sus. Nobody really knows what the answers are here. Is Amberlynn's girlfriend wifey real? Who knows? Is she still di dying, dating wifey? Who knows? It's all a big part of the Amberlynn cinematic universe, but that is our introduction to wifey. Moving on. Now, the next bit of this does involve two specific parts that I'm going to combine into one. And this is the raindrops and pedal eavesdrop and the Casey era. I'm going to combine them because basically these two topics kind of play into each other. And I do just want to give a quick warning that it does involve the topics of SA. This is a very serious part of this iceberg. And I am not really going to go into too many specifics here. I do just want to give a broad understanding of these two situations. And we are going to start this off with Raindrops and Pedal Eavesdrop, a poem that Amberlynn actually uploaded onto her channel, which I now think doesn't actually exist on her channel. Speaking Up by Amberlynn Reed. Let's see, who does everyone believe? Let's start gambling our life, rolling dice like knives on a platter. Who will survive? Will it be the false nightmare you spit or the reality I have tied? Tied to a place, a place of sadness, and now revealed an altar into madness. Why are you going to break the tide and just leave it there? Break the ice and throw the stone and not think twice? Now, a lot of people were kind of confused to what this poem was relating to. A lot of people kind of speculated over whether it kind of refers to some deeper themes. But a lot of people also know that it did relate to deeper themes because there was actually a video uploaded before this poem, which is now deleted, where Amberlynn actually speaks about a past relationship that she had with somebody who she alleges essayed her. Was with a girl named... I feel very um, strongly about this and I feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not no longer so I'm able to say her name because she's a once was person like is no longer here anymore obviously I'm not gonna say his new name because we're talking about her transgender talk is too confusing so we're just gonna leave it as that um so her name was she was helping me carry I guess laundry to the laundry room I don't remember really what we were arguing about but I know it must have been something really stupid probably about the laundry blah 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 and she was carrying her clothes I'm pretty sure I remember and I was like carrying mine and then I'm I want to say this happened it's been like six seven years so 
memories are kind of like fading here and there. But I do remember us being on the sidewalk and I remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me. When you say no to someone, whether you've been with them for like a month or whether you've been been with them for like six years, if you say no to a sexual act, your partner should accept that. That is where I firmly stand. But she didn't. And she would literally sit there and beg me. Now this video is very uncomfortable for a multitude of reasons here. Now, I'm not going to speculate over who's right and who's wrong here because after this video, it did become a big back and forth. The person in this situation, Casey, actually did respond, calling out Amberlynn and actually alleging that Amberlynn was the one that abused them rather than he abusing her. She grabbed my arm with her nails. First time any physical that was negative and I remember that clearly it shocked me it shocked me really really bad and it was just I, I didn't know what to make of it really I'm 16 years old I didn't know what I mean I knew what physical abuse was but not really so I mean, I was a kid, I was a child, so I just assumed, okay, I made her mad? I mean, when, my, when I would get my mom mad, she'd spank me, or she'd like, you know, you know, get my ear, or like, you know, the things a mom would do, a dad would do, you know, behave, you know? But, so that shocked me, but it, nothing really happened a little while after that. So I was just, whatever. Now the thing was she said with the laundry, that's a big false. Big false. Want to know how I know that? Because me and my mom would do her laundry. Me and my mom would go do laundry. She wasn't getting up to do laundry. She maybe did it a couple of times, a handful of times, probably counting on my one hand. She didn't do it all the time at all. And me dropping the bag and choking her, I never, ever did that, ever. I, I mean, what's the reason for me to do that? I mean, I, I didn't do it. And I don't know where this story came from. I didn't do it at all. Now, the places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may I may have laid a hand on her a few times, that was in self-defense. This was a very serious situation, and naturally a lot of people got very heated over it. Now to be honest with you, I don't think the situation was exactly ever resolved, but a lot of people were angry at Amberlynn, a lot of people were taking the side of Casey, the ex in this situation, and a lot of people were also fuming and very angry over the fact that Amberlynn actually deadnamed Casey, which I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute the word, the name, because I, I, I'm just not comfortable with that, no matter what actually happened in this situation. I, I, I'm just not comfortable with dead naming somebody. I think that's a very uh, messed up thing to do. This is an incredibly disturbing topic. I'm not exactly sure who is right or who is wrong in this situation. If I kind of draw myself out from the drama sphere, I, I, I honestly couldn't give you a conclusive opinion because to be honest with you, I don't really know the nitty gritty specifics of this and I am only covering it because it is in this iceberg and I do just want to give you a, a little broad explanation and just to let you know that this actually happened and this is a part of Amberlynn's timeline but it does seem based on what everything I've read most people are supportive of Casey most people seem to believe that Amberlynn actually abused Casey I'm not really going to give an opinion on this because I'm not educated enough in this topic and I do think it is best we moved away from this now and as I said I did just want to give you guys a brief explanation and a brief introductory I guess stage to this scenario but yes let's move on to the next bit which is the cycle. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm a big lover of a graph. I'm a big, big fan of graphs, and I don't even know why. If I see a nice graph, I'm like, 
That's a nice graph, and I can appreciate it. I can appreciate a lovely bit of graphics design. Now, this is basically referring to the life cycle of Amble and Reed's YouTube content, from redemption, to ignorance, to indignation, to manipulation, and back to redemption. It truly is a cycle that never stops, from dietary stuff to girlfriend drama. It truly is the Amble and Reed life cycle. And guess what, people? It is never going to end. I promise you now, in two years time, I could probably do a part two to this because there are going to be so many new situations just in the next month involving Amberlynn. Now the next part says the queen of moderation and I think this is just a meme in Amberlynn's community to do with her, uh, I guess, saying that she's moderate with food. I may be wrong here, but uh, I, I, I did find this clip of Amberlynn uh, making a statement to do with her moderation with food. Amberlynn, why are you eating a whole bag of hot Cheetos and thinking you can lose weight? So that's what I want to talk about. Um, I have said before I'm the queen of moderation. So there's nothing really more that I can say that this is a little Mimi Weemi in the Amberlynn community of her being extremely moderate with her food. And uh, I'm just going to politely say that I agree with that statement. But we are now going to move on to one of my personal favorite parts of this iceberg. This is the Damon White situation. Now this <laughs> is genuinely like... Like, one of the most batshit things I, I've heard in this whole Amberlynn, and I, I don't know if it's, like, crazy to some things actually in this, but to me personally, I see this, and I see this as, as a very good representation of Amberlynn's character. So basically, there was a, a, a Facebook group which liked to discuss Amberlynn, and she was banned from this Facebook group, because they didn't really want to allow her to see what they were saying, because, you know, it's a private group, and public discussion and discourse is a thing that is allowed. Free speech you know, my good old Americans, am I right? But yeah, she wasn't allowed in this Facebook group. So Amberlynn decided to reach out to somebody who had a fake Facebook account posing as a gay man so she could infiltrate this Facebook group. And she got access to this account on her uh, fake gay man account. And she basically started commenting on a few posts in this. And it started off with, you know, her being a relatively nuanced. She wasn't exactly defending herself. But as she got, I guess, uh, progressed in this group, it started to get worse and worse of where she just progressively defended her own actions on the fake account and eventually people started to get a little bit suspicious and then the person who I guess created the fake account then reported Amberlynn and said, hey, Amberlynn's using this account and this is Amberlynn defending herself in this group. Now, morally, this isn't exactly the most like, crazy thing to be done, but personally, I just see this as like, holy shit, do you care that much what people think about you, that you are willing to pose as a gay man? I mean, fair enough, uh, you do you, but it is... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit entertaining to me. Also, I don't know why I just said that in like a negative connotation. I'm a bisexual man myself. If, if Amberlynn wants to pose as a bi man, I mean, it's a little bit bad, but I'm not saying it's bad that she is trying to be get. I, I, just, I don't even know what I'm saying here. But, um, moving on to a uh, narcissist. This is pretty simple. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why this is in the iceberg. I guess it's because people think she's a narcissist, but Amberlynn did a narcissist test and she actually did didn't get narcissist. She got a pretty average score and I guess she's not a narcissist. Now I'm gonna press score my narcissism quiz now. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Okay, it says my total is 13. It says between 12 and 15 is average. So I'm right in between average. It says celebrities often score closer to 18. Narcissists score over 20. <gasps> to be honest with you, I don't really know why this is in the iceberg. Because as I said earlier, you know, she didn't actually score as a uh, chronic narcissist or whatever you want to call it. But alas, we have reached the bottom part of this segment. And now we can move on to the next bit. But before we go any further, I do just want to say, pat yourself on the back because you have... You've joined me on this journey and we are really far in now and I am starting to get tired. My hair is starting to get a bit sweaty and I'm just getting tired. And I feel like I'm losing my mind at this process of going through every, like, there is so much on here. How does somebody have so many situations? I'm starting to have my mind just go a little bit crazy. I think I'm going to lose my mind by the end of this because I think we're only like halfway through. And I don't even know how. So I'm just gonna say, guys, get some hydration in you. Drink some water. I've gone from Peppy Max to Starbucks water. Well, one water, but I got it from Starbucks. 
God give me strength. And I'm not even religious. Her name is Amber Reed. Now, this for me personally is another really obscure one, but another extremely funny one. And it actually weirdly connects to an adult movie star. I'm not going to say what the actual word for those movies that this person stars in. Not because I'm against it, but because YouTube will strike this video and say you are now age restricted. So I'm uh, not going to do that. But basically, a adult movie star was getting really mad because people started tweeting about Amberlynn Reed at her because her name was Amberlynn. And weirdly enough, apparently, now I'm not 100% too accurate on this, but apparently the star got so mad that she decided to send a cease and desist to Amberlynn Reed to let her know that she can no longer use the name Amberlynn. I, I, I don't believe this, but according to Amberlynn, this is what she actually did. But she has like a trademark on that name. And so people were doing hashtag Amberlynn on Twitter, which makes sense because they were talking about me. And this entertainer was seeing that. So she sent me a cease and assist or whatever it's called. Like I've never had someone do that to me before. So it's been like overwhelming. So I talked to her lawyer and I'm not allowed to use the name Amberlynn anymore, which is, it kind of hurts because it's like, that's one thing that's like yours. Like you, people can't take your name away from you, you know? And you guys have always known me as Amberlynn. Everyone has known me as Amberlynn. Like, Amberlynn. I just refuse to believe that this is a real thing. Like, I'm sorry. Like, everything that's happened so far, I, I can somewhat believe. But, but this, I, I just, you can't sue somebody for having a name. Like, can you? Is, is that where we're going with it? I mean, it's America. It's a crazy place. And I, I guess I wouldn't be that shocked. But, I, I just don't think I believe this. But, um, yeah. Apparently, Amberlynn now goes by the name Amber because of the situation, but again, I don't believe this, but apparently it happened. Moving on. Eight, meth. Yeah, the uh, time where Amberlynn Reed went through her Jesse Pinkman arc. Have I ever Honestly, done yeah. drugs though? I ate meth one time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is a really weird season of Breaking Bad, but um, uh, moving on to Killed Destiny's Cat. Now, this was... <laughs> Look, I shouldn't laugh because apparently a cat actually went missing in this, but um, <laughs> Amberlynn was accused of deliberately, I guess, killing a cat of uh, her ex-girlfriend, and um, I'm just going to play some clips from this. Earlier, I was letting Leia out, the puppy, I had the door open, and I swear to God, a giant ass spider hopped into the living room. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And Leia was already outside. I didn't have a leash on her because we're trying to teach her how to stay near us without a leash so we don't have to worry about the leash. How am I going to get Leia? But then how am I going to get the big ass spider that just hopped in the living room? I didn't know what to do. So I like ignored the spider for half of a second. And I hurried and grabbed Leia, and then all of a sudden, Gracie, my cat, well, Destiny's cat, but my cat now, she goes booking it outside. She got out for me because I caught her and catched her. We're thinking she wanted to do it in her next opportunity, and she did. We're thinking our friend Jessica didn't notice, but Gracie ran away, and now we're gonna try to find her. So yeah, basically the cat went missing, and people started speculating that Amberlynn did this on purpose, because I guess in the space of one day, the cat somehow escaped twice, and uh, people are blaming Amberlynn for this. Now, for me personally, <laughs> I, I think this is reaching. I, I don't think Amberlynn Reed deliberately tried to kill a cat, but um, it is a little bit weird that around four days after this, they then decided to buy another cat. So, what are we doing? We are here at PetSmart getting this kitten. <laughs> I sure hope so. I put Again, it in. Or he's playing in his poop. Now, with this video being uploaded four days after the cat 
actually went missing, I can't help but notice a reoccurring trend here of Amberlin being a little bit suspicious or just in general badly treating animals. Firstly, there was the whole accusation of Amberlin allowing her dog to become abuse, abuse, obese, and then there was the accusations of in general animal abuse, and now I found this clip of Amberlin seemingly, I guess, not, not allowing the cat to escape, but just in general not being, I guess, a good owner and making sure that her cats don't escape. Twice in one day, it does just seem to be a bit of a reoccurring pattern. Now, I don't think Amberlynn deliberately allowed the cats to escape, but yeah, there does seem to be some pattern going on here involving Amberlynn and animals, and I just don't think that is it is wise for her to be somebody looking after her pets. Wipe gate. Now, <laughs> I couldn't really find any anything to do with this, but basically there's a few people on Redditing suggesting that Becky had to, I guess, wipe Amberlynn's ass when Amberlynn went to the toilet, and uh, I can't find any evidence of this other than a few Reddit comments here and there about this thing involving Amberlynn. It's a bit gross, but to be honest with you guys, I don't even personally wipe, you so um, I don't think it's that bad. I beg your pardon? Now, I do just want to bring attention to the fact that I am aware that we are going through this iceberg very slowly, and I am looking at my research document right now, and it does seem that we are getting to some bits where we can actually speedrun. So, um, turn on the music. Foster homes. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is Amberlynn Reed in the past stating the fact that she has been in foster care here and there. Not completely throughout her life, but you know, she's been in foster care quite a lot. Casey's reply to raindrop and pedal eavesdrop. Now, this part is just a repeat of earlier, so we don't really need to go anywhere in depth with this. So, moving on. Now, the next part is a little bit mean. It is BMI over IQ. Now, this is basically a meme stating that Amberlynn's BMI is now large... <laughs> Than her IQ. Jeez. Really? Oh, are we really doing this? Dead naming Casey. Again, we've covered this in the previous part. This is a rather disgusting thing that Amberlynn has done, but I have kind of covered this, so I don't really think that we need to necessarily go into the specifics here. It's just something pretty tragic that Amberlynn did, and something which I think we can all, you know, collectively denounce. Rosa Parks. What? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I guess at least Stamberlin was on the right side of history. I would go to the past and I would be on the bus and I would stick up for Rosa Parks. Good for you, Amberlin. I am, I'm so incredibly proud of you. You're on the right side of history. Well done. Inauthentic orange chicken. Now, this is basically in reference to the fact that Amberlynn does love a little bit of chicken. She likes the chicken from, uh, I guess, some form of fast food restaurant, which is inauthentic and certainly orange. I, I guess um, this is something which I don't really care about because I've got actually nothing to say about this part. Moving on. Now, this is the final bit, the final part until we are at the very bottom of the iceberg, and this is Aunt Tammy. This is basically, I believe, when family first started to get involved in the Amberlynn verse. Basically, Aunt Tammy is actually Amberlynn's biological aunt who has recently, well not recently, but come out multiple times exposing Amberlynn for lying about a bunch of stuff. And I'm not really going to go into specifics here because I said I want to keep it brief and quick. But to me personally, it is a very good character summary of Amberlynn that even family members are now willing to come out and expose Amberlynn for all of her lies. I mean, there were even exposed photos of Amberlynn and her aunt arguing all the way back in 2011 on Facebook where Tammy was calling out about, I guess, Amberlynn's bullshit. I mean, this shit just goes so unbelievably deep. But ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. We are finally, finally gotten to the bottom of the iceberg. Now below this bit is the abyss, the truly messed up things of the Amberlynn verse, and we will get into that, but we do need to cover the very bottom of the iceberg. And I'm now gonna have a little nap because this video has been going on for very long and I need some sleep. So um, yeah, be right back. Hello, 
it's another day. For me personally, it's another day. For you, it's like a second. It's been a few days for me actually, and uh, I've had time to recuperate my thoughts. I've had time to just really, just kind of uh, have some form of therapy after what I've just gone through for the last hour in this video. But now we're gonna go into the final parts of this. We're gonna delve into the the abyss, I guess, and honestly, I am just so absolutely done, and I've only just started recording this segment, so without further ado, let's get into it. First off, we start with Legs Weeping. Now, to be honest with you, I actually don't really know what this reference is to. The only thing I can kind of, I, I, I guess, find to do with the Legs Weeping bit is that it's something possibly to do with Amber having swollen legs. To be honest with you, I, I don't really think this is a significant thing. And yeah, uh, moving on to the next bit. Dad in jail. Now, there has been a lot of speculation about the good old Amberlynn Reed family because a lot of people have been doing some digging and they've been finding some uh, suspicious, sussy wussy things about Amberlynn Reed's family with her mother and some people also speculating about her father going to jail. And now, if this is the case, if Amberlynn's dad has gone to jail, that doesn't necessarily make him a bad person. A lot of people out there go to jail for doing some silly things which they regret, but it doesn't make them a bad person. But maybe he went to jail for some bad things. Personally, I don't know if this is true, but it's just on the Amberlynn Reed iceberg. And as I said, I'm going to go through all of this, sadly. Jade is wifey. Now, Jade is apparently, uh, I, I guess, the new girlfriend of, of Amberlynn after the whole wifey scenario. And basically, it just goes back to the speculation I spoke about earlier with Amberlynn's new girlfriend, which I guess is Jade. And apparently, Jade's favorite film is Willy Wonka, just like uh, wifey's. And, you know, it's... It's a bit convoluted mess, and I'm just kind of thinking, did I really spend £9,000 a year to get a degree that has resulted in this being my career? Yes, I did, and I'm bloody grateful for it, because I think I'd die if I did a 9 to 5. But yeah, this is just a little bit confusing, and I'm going a little bit off topic, but we should just get on to the next bit, which is Rotten Tooth. Now, this bit is pretty simple. Amberlin had a tooth, and guess what? It was rotten. So, while we're here and I'm thinking about it, I forgot to show you my wisdom tooth that was bothering me for years and years and years. So, if you don't want to get grossed out, I would fast forward it a little bit. Someone reminded me. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I honestly don't care about this and nobody really needs to see this shit. So, uh, moving on to the next bit, which is wrong shoes. Now, this is a widely speculated rumor amongst the Amberlynn verse. Basically, a lot of people have noticed that throughout a lot of Amberlynn's videos, when she is, I guess, uh, going around in an electric scooter, people have started to point out that every single time she's in these scooters, Amberlynn likes to point out that she's wearing the wrong shoes, and because of that, her feet are now hurting. Amberlynn's little feety weedies, her little toesy woesies are aching a little bit, so she has to drive around in a I can't speak. Drive around in a mobility scooter. So we've had a long day. I'm wearing the wrong shoes and my feet hurt and so do hers, so. My heel spur hurts right now. Whew. I'm wearing the wrong shoes, fellas. Oh, and if you guys are new to my channel and wondering why I use this, it's because it's 2 a.m. Destiny just does it because like, I feel stupid doing it, and, but I really do it because of my heel spur. And I guess people's whole argument here is uh, Amberlynn is embarrassed by this whole thing of her being in a mobility scooter. Personally, I don't really see why you'd be embarrassed by that because in my uh, in my dream world, we all get mobility scooters and we don't have to walk anywhere. It sounds absolutely glorious. And Amberlynn, you could be at the forefront of that movement. Now, if there's one thing I've noticed about this iceberg is the surprising lack of dramatic and serious events amongst this iceberg. To me personally, it does just seem to be more meme fun, quirky things amongst the whole iceberg. Like, yeah, there are a few things on this, like the whole rumor of her lying about cancer, for example. That's a pretty serious serious accusation. That's a little bit, uh, a little bit edgy. I did some other edgy things on there, but for the most part, a lot of it is a lot of fun, quirky things, and that's kind of taken me by surprise. It's kind of restored my faith 
I guess, in Anne Boleyn Marie. Well, no, it hasn't, but and I, I'm just kind of glad that there are some funny things on here. Funny things like the next one. Coco Puffs. <laughs> a, a, aggression? Because Anne Boleyn, like me, I, I'm a big I'm a big defender of, of my food. Anne Boleyn, like me, uh, loves the munchies. She loves the food, and not uh, in a mean way. She just gets a little bit defensive when people are eating the food that, that she likes to consume. And I can understand that, because I like my food too. Is this going on for a bit long? Maybe. What's the matter? Maybe you're worried. Maybe you have six people here. Why have you guys? Huh? Why have you guys been here? Because I'm not going to be here. Why have you guys been here? Now, personally, I can understand where Amberlynn was coming from in this clip. If somebody is to eat my cereal, I will get a little bit fucking angry because that's my cereal. Please leave it alone. But yeah, judging from this clip, judging from this little angry moment, Amberlynn Reed, like Kenji, has food aggression. But also, I think we should have a little, a little segment with Kenji because I feel like we've gone through a lot today. So this has been a journey and uh, I feel like we need a little Shiba Inu to calm everything down and be like, you know what? This is all right. We're, we're gonna get through this. We're almost there. Let's continue. Destiny has FAS, which is fetal out. Well, you know what? I'm uh, I'm not gonna go over this. There is no, I guess, actual situation regarding this, and this is mere speculation over an extremely serious thing. And I do not want to delve down that. Now, maybe if there was a bigger scenario involving this, I would speak about it. If Amberlynn spoke about it or something like that, but it does just seem that this is mere speculation amongst forums, and I'm not gonna go into that because, to be honest with you, I just don't feel comfortable with that. Hoarder. Now, this is basically a lot of people have been concerned over the fact that Amber and maybe a hoarder and I'm gonna be honest with you guys like, a, a little bit serious here I myself am a pretty bad hoarder it's something which I've always done and it is actually quite frustrating like I don't know why I do this but like it, it just happens and it is frustrating and I can relate to it and I know this can be considered a quite serious thing and I'm not exactly speculating over it but I am just gonna uh, speak about this briefly mainly because Amberlynn has actually spoken about this you're a hoarder you're a conspicuous consumer how is she a hoarder i get rid of stuff like, like really? there's no tomorrow i have a shopping addiction for certain items but i'm not a hoarder look up the definition you know what? i'm gonna look up the definition of hoarding right now hoarding death initian let's see a large board huh Okay. A billboard? <laughs> that's not the right that's not the right no. thing. Okay. It probably means more than one thing, so. Um Okay. Hoarding is a disorder. It's a persistent difficulty of discarding or parting with possessions because of a perceived need to save them. A person with hoarding disorder experiences distress at the thought of getting rid of items. The complete opposite of Amberlynn Reed. Now this is weirdly a very big thing which I've seen discussed amongst a lot of people. Even Nikocado Avocado has, I, I, I guess, referenced Amberlynn's uh, apparent hoarding problem. And to be honest with you, I don't really get why that's a problem. If it's getting to a point of where, you know, it's affecting others, maybe I can get it. But as far as I've seen, like, I can't really find anything to even suggest that. But you know, it's on the, it's on the, Iceberg, and the iceberg is something we need to worship and appreciate. Moving on, pronunciation issues due to education. Now this does refer to a thing that we were speaking about earlier with Amberlynn Reed's pronunciation of the English language not exactly being up to a very good standard. And this is kind of suggesting that this is because of, I guess, some education issues of Amberlynn possibly not having education, leading to her pronunciations not exactly being too good. But to be honest with you, I have an honours degree and uh, I can barely speak the English language. So I don't exactly think that this is an education issue. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally, finally made it to the abyss. This is the segment of where things start to get a little bit nutty. 
a little bit spooky, a little bit sus, and a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of things on there which uh, just seemingly aren't true, and I'm not even trying to say that to be rude. They're just, it's just some things on it. Like, started off with highest weight of 607LB. Like I mentioned earlier, there's this trend throughout this iceberg of mentioning Amberlynn's weight, but to be honest with you, I have done the research, and there is nothing to suggest that Amberlynn Reed has, has been at 707 pounds. And maybe she has been, but for one, I... I, I I, I can't see anything to even suggest that. And and, and two, is, is that really that much of an issue to be all the way down at the abyss? Like, surely that's like a high up thing, like Amblin Reed and her dietary thing, weight stuff. That's quite a known thing. This part shouldn't be in the abyss. This is wrong. I, I'm sorry, I'm disrespecting the iceberg. I, I need to apologize. Heel spur. Now, this is the part of the Amblin law where I'm kind of sat here thinking... Really? Like, is this is this really a thing? Like, do we care about this? And uh, yeah, apparently we do because you know a lot of people have been speculating over Amberlynn's heel spur because Amberlynn has said in multiple videos that she has a heel spur, which is some form of thing to do with pain in your ankle or heel, I guess. Okay, so my heel spur hurts really bad today. I'm like limping. Literally, oh, look at that booty. Um, for some reason. My left foot has been getting kind of swollen in the last like week and that's the same foot with my heel spur but for some reason I don't know what happened how it happened I hurt my heel spur even worse now from what I understand the reason some people bring this up is mainly to do with the whole electric buggy thing of uh this is just another excuse for Amblin to use an electric buggy but I don't understand that because guys electric buggies are cool I want one. Can somebody give me one for free? I will shill the shit out of an electric buggy company if they give me one for free. Please. Seriously, please. Fristy has FAA. Yeah, guys, I said it. I'm not going to speculate over serious things like this, no matter how annoying you may find the person to be. I'm not doing it. Gaslighting Alzheimer patients. Now, I really couldn't find anything to do with this. Like, Amberlynn Reed does have a history of being a, a PCA worker, but to be honest with you, I, I, I've done the research as, as my prime researcher, Loose, and we really couldn't find anything to do with this other than a, a mild discussion of this on Reddit, where even people there have said that this part was exaggerated and is more part to do with her allegedly lying to patients. But even that is just mere speculation. So to be honest with you, I think we're just going to have to move on. <laughs> Pooping on Eric's floor. Now, I don't exactly understand this one because to be honest with you guys, I do this shit all the time. That wasn't a pun. But no, basically, um, this was a rumor set up from a, a, a subreddit, and it was a, a, a deliberate rumor. It was obviously fake, and there was even a glorious fake image created, which genuinely looks really real. Like, I'm looking at this right now, and if I saw this without any context, I think, oh, oh my god, Amblin Reed has done a big stinky poop on the floor, and to be honest, that's completely fine, because I... Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's not real, guys. Um, it's, it's a fake rumor. Um... I don't poo on the floor, I promise. I promise. Seriously, guys, I don't poo on the floor. Bleeding for a year. Now, again, this is a very personal thing, and to be honest with you, I don't really know why this is in the iceberg. This is just something Amberlynn has spoken about in videos to do with her cancer, saying that she bled uh, every day for a year during the whole process of having cancer. And to be honest with you, I think this is a very believable thing. Whilst I don't really know the symptoms of some forms of cancer, I can definitely see this being one of them. And yeah, I, I don't really have anything more to say, then that is a very tragic thing, and I'm glad that Amblin has healed and gotten through this. Eric Blogs. Now, I, I think this is just a reference to a character in the Amblin verse, somebody called Eric Vlogs, so I guess this was just a, a little bit of a spelling mistake, but who knows, I could be perfectly wrong here. If I am, be sure to correct me in the comment section. Because I'm sure a lot of you will do that throughout this entire video, because I've probably got quite a few things wrong. But, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not. Not a lesbian. Look, based on the romantic history we've gone through of Amble and Reed throughout this video, if she turned out to not be a lesbian, that would be, I mean, that would be a plot twist of the century, and this is something, I guess, a, a lot of people are speculating over, but to be honest with you, um, no, no, that, I don't, I don't think that's true, and, yeah.
Moving on. Movie theater, <laughs> movie theater, H J. And uh, because of the YouTube monetization system, I'm just gonna allow you to work out what HJ actually means. Please do not go to the comment section and comment what you think it means because, actually no, go to the comment section and comment what you don't think it is. Just something which is completely incorrect and put it in the comment section. Thank you. But yes, this references to a time Amberlynn spoke about some adult activities that she got up to in a movie theater. What has been your most public sexual experience? <laughs> I had relations in a movie theater in high school with a boyfriend and um, it was a crowded movie oh theater God, and that's no, all man, you need to know. know. I did not need to know this. Moving on. Now we are into the deeper part of the abyss. This is where things start to get a little bit strange. I mean, I said that before, but it gets stranger, it gets weirder, it gets spookier, and it starts off with good old undiagnosed diabetes. Don't you just love the internet? Now, this is basically something a lot of people in the Amberlynn verse have been speculating over, over whether Amberlynn has diabetes. And I'm not going to speculate over that because I'm not a doctor. And the only reason I'm even mentioning this is because Amberlynn herself has actually addressed this, therefore putting it into the Amberlynn timeline of where she basically just flat out denied that she has diabetes. You're diabetic. No. And that's basically it. She doesn't have diabetes, according to her, and I'm not gonna speculate, and neither are you. Origin of the name Rarity. Now guys, I feel like we're kind of uh, taken out some shit and thrown out the wall at this point because this is not, this is not an abyss type thing that should be on an iceberg list. This is basically Amberlynn giving the, the, the reason she gave the name to her cat. Why is this so low down? I don't understand. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have named Jax Midnight instead. And Rarity Gray was pretty easy. Um, I've always loved the name Rarity. Rarity has been my favorite name for so many years. Okay. Uh, great. I, 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 I guess. Destiny's 21st birthday. Now this references a photo shoot that Amberlynn and Destiny had, which I guess became a meme and I can kind of see why there's, there's nothing really anything of relevance here, but you know, I guess it goes into the iceberg. Rejected TLC. Now this is one I definitely have heard of and to be honest with you, Amberlynn appearing on TLC would not shock me. She's somebody that clearly loves money, so I wouldn't be surprised to see her on TLC, but apparently uh, she decided to not do anything to do with TLC. There has been quite a few rumors about me, but some just need to be like said. Like, some really do. Gotta be honest, if I was 600 pounds, I would not apply to be on that show. I wouldn't apply to be on any TV show because, like, no, no, thank you. Like, it did go through, it did go through my mind at one point to apply for The Biggest Loser, but it's just not my thing. I don't think I would last in a TV show. I don't think I'd be good for it. I do feel like this is one of the more surprising parts of this because on a serious note, based on everything I've seen, based on Amberlynn's history with diet culture and exploiting it for money and monetization, I'm quite surprised that she doesn't want to do something like TLC because she would get paid a big old stinking bag and I'm quite surprised that she wouldn't want that bag. I mean, maybe in the future she will because, you know, as the internet does, it forgets gets about people and eventually they stop making money because nobody actually cares anymore. We've seen it with The Onion Man and I wouldn't be surprised to see it with Amber and Reed. So if she appears on TLC, just say that your boy predicted it. Wifey who? Now, this is just a reference to a community post that Amberlynn made when she took a selfie with Destiny, who had just publicly broken up with her ex. Again, I don't really care. Moving on. Size 6 XL. This is a clothing size. Amberlynn has wore this clothing size. Moving on. I, I said moving on quite a lot in this, haven't I? Can we get a counter? Can someone? No, actually, I'm not going to make my edit. A jacket, you don't need to do that. Moving on. Doesn't have BED. Now, this is a reference to a lot of people, I guess, speculating over that Amberlynn doesn't have a diagnosis to do with her eating habits. And I'm not going to speculate, and I need to even stop saying that I'm not going to speculate because obviously I'm not going to speculate. But Amberlynn has actually addressed this and actually stated that 
I mean, she does have some form of a diagnosis to do with her eating habits. So obviously I talked to my counselor <laughs> about my eating habits and such, and he straight up told me the words binge eating disorder. And we talked more about that. And so when he told me, oh yeah, binge eating disorder, da 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 da, I was like, holy shit, like I've been right this whole time. That's exactly what's going on with me. Because at nighttime I eat large, I'm talking about large quantities of food and I feel out of control. Now maybe it's not an official diagnosis, I don't really know, I don't really care. As long as she's getting help with that, that's absolutely great. But you know, I kind of doubt that she's getting help with it because it's Amberlynn Reed and she knows her way is a big thing to make money on the internet. But yes, now we move on to Ruined Pride Vacation. Has Amberlynn Reed upset the gays? I don't think so, actually. I think it's more that she was a gay upset herself, and understandably so, because what I'm about to show is actually quite uh, disturbing, and this is one point where I actually will not get mad at Amberlynn whatsoever. It's actually quite disturbing to see this. I feel like I've had a way better time than I even anticipated. We ended up not going to Pride, though, today. We were gonna go, but Eric and Ricky ended up going way before us. Protesters were screaming with and to, you know, obviously the people attending Pride. Now we got downtown. Sorry, that's what they were saying. We're at Pride. Oh my God, look at all these people. And look, look what's going hands. on. Yeah, look at all this hate that's over here. So I think we're just gonna find a spot. It's genuinely crazy to me that these people exist in 2021 when this happened, I believe, or 2020. People will be like, but my free speech, man! I, I don't care! You're a freak! You're a weirdo! If you're going to a Pride Festival to protest, oh my god, my brother, my brother in Christ, please just get laid. Because I, I don't think you can, pe can, can can complain about a gay person's sexuality when you yourself, in a heterosexual sexuality, where there are quite a lot of heterosexual people on the planet, you're not getting laid, so you're now taking that anger out on the gays. And why? Just go get laid, my friend. It's, it's not that difficult. Actually, it probably is for you. It, no, it's actually impossible for you. So. Maybe just take your anger out on video games. I don't know. It's just disappointing that this exists, and it's disappointing that Amblin Reed had to deal with that, regardless of my opinions on her. Lonely man's. <laughs> yeah, so apparently Amblin at a point of time had a lonely man's. <laughs> she doesn't have it anymore, but uh oh I would pay for that shit. I would pay. And it's also a thing to do with her having the name of an adult movie star, which we have spoken about before, and it is being repeated in this iceberg. And I definitely didn't just say that thing about the Lonely Mans. I did not say that. Lemon juice. It's bloody lovely. Now, I needed some of that lemon juice, because the next bit we're moving on to is probably one of the worst things on this list. This is the bit of where... Amblin Reed, basically, in a certain situation, uh, messaged Becky's dying mother. Now, you may be wondering, what did she message to Becky's dying mother? Well, there are some leaked audio messages of Amblin, and I'm just going to play them to you now. And as you can imagine, they're absolutely delightful. I'm tired of not being appreciated when I try to help you the best that I can. And it's just frustrating. This whole this situation is, Amberlin is super frustrating. Talking to Becky's mom and I right after she had her to surgery. I'm going to put it out there how the Amberlynn really treated Becky's mom. Don't let her fool everyone, please. I am not trying to argue with you. That is the last thing I want to do since you just got out of surgery. I don't want to cause any more stress onto you, onto Becky, onto anyone in your family, onto myself, because that's just not going to fix anything. I am just tired of the added drama onto my YouTube, and I'm tired of not being appreciated when I try to help you the best that I can, and it's just frustrating. This whole situation is super frustrating and I finally just kind of wanted to speak upon the situation. 
So she wanted to speak on a situation that became about her when Norma had just got out of surgery. I will release more. When we were Facebook friends, I have left comments on your Facebook regarding your cancer. I have asked how you're doing. I have been there in that sense. And, you know, we don't have to really go down the line of oh, you didn't message me, you didn't message me, because I can say the same about you, where not once have you thanked me personally for the money I was going to give you, for the video I made, you heard for that. the backlash I'm you. getting, for sticking up for you. Not once did you say sorry for any of the things that you have brought to my channel that is in a negative so for the context here, uh, yeah, uh, basically Amberlynn sent these voice messages shortly after Becky's mother had some pretty serious surgery, and I think this is a, a great character summarization of Amberlynn. She is so ego-driven and so unbelievably childish that she thought it would be a good idea to send somebody an audio message just after he had surgery saying, <laughs> I just don't think you appreciate me enough, Amberlynn. And look, what's there to appreciate? Like, I'm not trying to sound like a dick, but you, you don't seem to be, like, the nicest of a, of, a, of a person, especially based on that alone, but I, I, I personally don't see much to appreciate here. This was a very big controversy, and I believe I have actually spoken about this before, and it's, it's just a little bit mad. Like, I don't understand how anyone, even if they think they're right in this situation, even if they have some justifiable reasons to say these things, would think that it's a good idea to send that after somebody has surgery. Like, that's insane. Undiagnosed hypermania. Now, there is literally nothing about this on the internet. I, I genuinely couldn't find a, a single splice of information. So, yeah. But moving on to the next two, these are two things which I actually couldn't find any evidence of. One of them is filming residents of a retirement home and filmed a woman giving birth. These are two things on here that I couldn't exactly find anything to do with. I think there was a few minor discussions here and there on Reddit, but... Other than that, there wasn't really anything to support these allegations, support this part of the iceberg. But then there was also a bit how uh, Christie's parents hired Amber. And with this, again, there is no evidence really for anything here. And then we even move on to the next bit, which is 8XL. And again, there is nothing here to suggest that Amberlynn had wore 8XL clothing. And even if she had, that wouldn't be an issue. But I'm just kind of confused to why there are now multiple things on here where there just really isn't any evidence of or really any discussion about it in general. Like even the 8XL thing, like there really wasn't much that I found. And I'm just kind of thinking... Why is this here? I'm, I'm, I feel like my time is being wasted. No. But ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, because we... We finally made it to the abyss. The bottom of the abyss. This is the area of Amblin Reed's, I guess, multiverse, of where things start to just get a little bit kooky, a little bit crazy, even slightly quirky. And that moves us on to the first thing being apophatic, apophatic facts is wifey. Now, this is a reference to a YouTube channel called Apathetic Facts. Now, this channel has been around for quite a while, and it is completely and utterly dedicated to exposing Amberlynn Reed and all of her actions, and just in general, poking a bit of fun here and there. And there is a theory going round that this account is actually wifey. Dun, dun, dun. Obviously, it's not true. Um, there's, there's not really any evidence to suggest this other than a few, I guess, people discussing it in a few forums, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun little, uh, little theory, a little Shane Dawson theory, but there's, there's nothing here. Um, I wish there was, because that would actually be a massive plot twist in the Amberverse Mortyverse, but, yeah, 
Highest weights of 650 pounds. Again, this is just more mere speculation about how Amblin has lied about her weight and she actually has been much heavier than she's actually allowed people to know. But again, if that was the case, I I, I really wouldn't care. I, I, I honestly wouldn't. But, you know... The internet's got our internet. Now the next one is one of the most biggest and debated things throughout the entire Amberverse. This is something which in the last year has really been discussed quite a lot. And to me personally, this is actually an incredibly insensitive thing. This is the allegation of Amberlynn faking her cancer. Now, in my opinion, I have not seen anything to actually prove that this is something that has happened. A lot of people have been speculating about this, a lot of people have been discussing this, and it's even led, as I mentioned earlier in this video, to Amberlynn coming out in a YouTube video with actual documents proving that she had cancer, and that even led to people speculating over if those documents were fake. And I have discussed this before, but Jesus, Christ, like, I, I just don't get it. Like, this is so unbelievably insane. This allegation is so mad. And I, I, I guess it does summarize Anne Boleyn's character. Like, for one, I, I don't think she deserves this allegation, but it does summarize how nobody trusts her on the internet. Because of all the things that she has been through, all of the dramatic scenarios, all of the things she's been exposed for, people do not trust her to the point of believing her over her cancer. That is absolutely mind-blowing, and whilst I don't believe she faked it, I do think Amberlynn really needs to look at this and think, wow, what have I done? What have I done to make the internet not trust me to this extent? Um... But ladies and gentlemen, we've made it. After everything, after this very, very long video, we have got to the bottom of the abyss. Now, this part of this is one of the most mind-blowing things that could possibly have happened in the Amberverse. This could change everything. This is something so reality-bending that even Amberlynn herself probably doesn't know it. And that is, Amberlynn is a paid actress. Dun! Dun! We just did that, actually. No, this probably isn't true. In fact, no, this isn't true. Guys, come on. Come on. Really? Actually, no. Maybe. Maybe this is true. And maybe this whole time, Amberlynn's been playing all of us. Maybe. Maybe we are the, are the puppets. And Amberlynn is the puppet master. Undiagnosed Bipolar Disorder. Now, I am coming back mid-edit because I did just realize that I somehow missed this one, and this apparently is a quite big thing. Basically, this references to Amberlynn, I guess, arguing with herself seemingly over the years on Twitter, where she kind of, I, I guess, at one point says that she was diagnosed with bipolar, and then at some points feels like she might be uh, bipolar. It's it's a little bit confusing, because in 2013, she says that her mom is bipolar, and she's not sure if it's genetic, but then she says that she is bipolar, on the same day and says that she was diagnosed with it at a young age, but then just over a year later, she says, am I bipolar? Probably, it's hereditary. And then another year later, she says, I feel like I'm bipolar, it runs in the family, so I wouldn't be surprised if I was. This is very confusing, and I, again, you, I, I feel like when it comes to diagnoses, it's, it's very difficult to get a diagnosis of pretty much anything. I think, like, self-diagnosis can be actually surprisingly healthy. I know a lot of people uh, disagree with that, but given the healthcare system in America and a lot of other countries in the world, it sometimes is okay just to say, I think I have this thing and I'm going to try and treat this in my own way because healthcare is expensive and they're not trying to help me. But I'm not really sure what the case is here, but I just felt like I needed to include it because I somehow missed it. And uh, yeah, moving on. Okay, uh, that's basically that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry if I didn't really go through everything in complete detail like you may have wanted me to, but trust me, where there is an Amberlin situation, there is a YouTube video speaking about it. You can go through all of these in detail by doing your own research. I could not go through every single one in detail because we'd be here for four 
blooming years. But thank you for coming along through this. I hope I did this to the best of my ability because I really did enjoy making this video as much as I've been complaining. It has just been a very, very long and tedious process. But thank you so much for coming along. Please, for the love of God, share this video. Get it out there. Like this video and comment beans because it's a different video. I don't know if this is going to do wrong. It's probably going to be one of my worst performing videos because it's so, I guess, different to my normal forms of content. But if you do want me to go through more icebergs, please comment some ideas down below. Please comment who you want and I will do that. 30,000 likes on this video and I'll do another iceberg within the next two weeks. I'm sorry, Jacket. I'm sorry to my researcher, Loose. We are going to do this all over again. But yeah, that is the end of this video. Please subscribe. Please follow my social medias at inabber69 on Twitter, particularly inabber on Instagram, and most definitely my second channel, inabber Live. It's all there in the description. Thank you so much for coming along, and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to go to bed now. Peace out. Buenos dias. Goodbye.